back to my bathroom and welcome to episode 13 of the hair color series. Got a lot to pack in today. Most importantly, it's the doctor's birthday. We're gonna be doing a skunk stripe together. We've got a blue shampoo that we're gonna try to cancel out orange and there's another giveaway. For this week, it's a $25 Amazon gift card. If you want to enter to win that, comment something below, anything, everything. We'll announce the winner in next Sunday's video and the giveaway winner from last week is timestamp below. It's towards the end of this video. We're going in with a color from Sally's. This is Wella Color Charm. This is a 5N, meaning it's a level five, so it's a medium brown, and it's neutral or natural. So it's not red or warm, and it's not blue or cool. It's kind of just in the middle. I typically mix it with another color. For example, if I had a client who wanted a nice brown, a medium brown with just a little hint of red where you can see it in the sun, I would do a 5N with a 5R to create that balance because 5R by itself is very, very red. 5N by itself is a little bland. So when you mix the two together, it's very, very nice. The N series is good for covering gray. Just remember 20 volume developer. It's a one to two ratio. So one part of this, two parts developer. Gel hair color like this one, see how it's really liquidy. I'm gonna use a scale by the way to measure this. Oh, and it smells really bad. <laughs> Gel is loosey goosey, so it's better to use when you're doing an all over application. Not really what we're doing today in foils, but that's all they had. We're going in with 10 volume developer because we're just depositing. I'm going from a level 10 to a level five. Now, technically it would be in my best interest to do a filler on these blonde parts. We're just gonna let it ride today, but if you need help with fillers or perhaps your hair turned red, or green by mistake, I have a video for you. You're gonna be okay, it's okay, it's easy fix. We're gonna mix this together. It should have the consistency kind of like this, much thinner than cream hair color. To release the beast, when we're doing the skunk or reverse skunk, the most important part of this is the sectioning. So if you dissect this a little bit, I already have a skunk tail right here or skunk stripe, whatever. It goes along with a middle part. I'm gonna bring it over with a side part and incorporate some of this blonde so it's a really big stripe. In a ponytail goes this side because it's not needed. Brush your hair down and let your hair fall to where it's naturally gonna fall. Then you wanna take a look at yourself and see where you would want your stripe to be, whether you're doing this with bleach, color, lightener, whatever, it doesn't matter. I want to leave my bang area out, so I'm gonna focus kind of on this mid area right here, and I want it to go all the way down to the length. I do have a mullet, real hair, fake hair. So I don't wanna just color the top part of my mullet, I need the bottom part, the party part colored too. Now I wanna go through and kinda of clean it up so it's an actual rectangle. Clip my bangs back to the opposite side, then we'll clip that part back. I'm gonna go through with some conditioner on a brush, paint it on the parts that I do not want colored. And you're doing it thick. Much easier to put hair color on than it is to remove it. Woo! You don't wanna just go in for the kill and apply all the color like this because you're gonna end up having spots. This is too thick of a section. Start with the fake hair. I've got my invisible gloves on. Take it out from my head so I can see and paint very thin sections. This is gonna look a little bit different on me because this is hair extensions. If it was my real hair, it'd be a nice even subsection, but it's not. Take a foil, you can use regular aluminum foil, whatever you have, fold this up, getting our tail, come on now. We're taking our brush and we're going side to side in the hair, making sure that everything is colored. Now I'm just gonna take this whole big chunk and I'm gonna outline it. This rectangle subsection, vertical subsection, like this, pin tail comb, make a lip with the foil. For this application, the lip is going to be towards me. In case I make a mistake and the hair color flies out, it's going to catch on this little fold. Bring it downtown. Use your one eyeball to do this. Apply the color. You already have it on the roots because you outline the quad. Taking it vertical, brushing it side to side to make sure everything is covered. It's also going to help if your subsection is really, really thin so the color can saturate through it without having to worry about little spots. Don't have to do any crazy method. I'm just gonna fold this. Take this hair up outline this little parting. Get the root area. Take another really thin vertical subsection. Go ahead and get the back side of that thing. Comb, foil over it, release the comb. Drop down your color. Don't worry about this. You've already colored that if you outlined your quad. Bring it downtown, side to side to make sure all our friends have hair color on it. Fold the foil. Don't zip lock it here because you don't want to make a crease of color. Pull it tight on the sides, leave some air pockets. Last piece, I've already outlined it, but I'm going to outline it again just because why not? Make sure the foil matches the part line. Put it in. 
This is the part, if anything's going to turn green, it's going to be this part right here. The reason it would turn green is because it's going from so, so light to dark. It's going to be missing that primary color, which is red, because essentially it's going from yellow, which is blonde, to dark, which is made up of blue, so it's missing the middle one, which is red. When that happens, you get the opposite of that color, which is green. That's why a lot of times if you have done your hair or you've gotten your hair done and it's a darker color, but it has a little ashy or green hue, you forgot the primer. It's okay, it's easy to fix, just throw it in there. All right, let's fold these little sides. Now for this little guy, honestly, if I had gloves, I would just do this with the glove, but I'm just gonna do one of these and throw it in a foil. Not even gonna fold that. Processing time for this is 30 to 45 minutes. So while we're doing that, we're gonna step out and break some of the rules and put on shampoo on dry hair, blue shampoo. We're gonna be trying this Fanola, Fanola, Canola Fanola, no orange shampoo. Haven't tried this yet. This is actually from Amazon. I'll link it below. But this is similar to violet shampoo that cancels out yellow hair. Because remember on the color wheel, across from violet is yellow. When they collide, they meet in the middle and they make a neutral or natural color. Same thing goes with orange. If you have orange hair, you need the opposite of orange to get rid of it. Orange is blue. So when they collide, it neutralizes it out. Not to brag, but I have a lot of orange in my hair. Oh, I like the top, look at that. It's like something weird. What? We're gonna paint this on much like we would hair color. You're technically not supposed to do that. It's supposed to be on wet hair. Rules are meant to be broken, especially in hair color. The worst that would happen is my hair has a blue tint. Won't be mad about that. So as you can see, it is very blue. Ooh. I'm gonna go through and start applying it anywhere I have orange and just kind of tapering it or feathering it down. I don't wanna bring this all the way to the ends for my hair because my ends are porous, they're fried. They're like a sponge. They will soak up anything you put on it. So if I were to apply this root to ends, the ends would stay blue. When I shampoo it out, it'll probably look a little green. So I'm gonna avoid the ends when I'm doing this particular application on dry hair. It's kind of hard to see in this lighting, bathroom lighting, see this ring of orange. That's what I'm looking to get rid of. I want to kind of neutralize this part out, make it more of a natural neutral color versus red tone, but definitely get rid of this orange band. And I'm not gonna do the back because I can't see it, so I'm not worried about it. All right, and we didn't use very much of this. Honestly, you could put it on your eyebrows if you wanted to, but did y'all see that bleached eyebrows are back? Finally, a trend that I don't have to even prepare or buy anything for. I don't even have any eyebrows. It's looking nice. It does look a little green to me, but we'll see. So I'll be right back. Ta-da! It's a really natural, neutral brown. Obviously didn't color or take well on the parts that were super, super platinum. And it does have a green tint. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it or not, but it is a very murky green. It's just not as beautiful as this darker part where this is like a rich chocolate. This is more of a murky, incomplete look obviously because we missed the filler. So a quick way to correct that would just be to add red in the formula. As far as the shampoo, it actually worked. There are still some golden tones, orange tones, but for the most part, especially in this area, it did cancel out that orange like band that I had. So it's just a nice neutral tone. Yes on this. That's it. Thanks again for joining me here in my bathroom. Don't forget there's a new giveaway every single week up until Christmas on this channel on every Sunday. Next week, uh, I don't know what we're doing, but I'll see you next week for something cool. Something cool.